What's up? This is Parker Jameson from the band Starkill. This is Eric from Black Breath. Hey, this is David Rivera from Ex Mortis. This is Ida from Trisphere. This is Ben from Goat Whore, and you're listening to the Great Metal Debate Podcast. All right, so, Mike, let me do the obligatory. How's the tour going so far? I know you haven't been out long. Yeah, we've been out for about two weeks now, and, uh, you know, these are our dates to uh, basically get us on the other side of the country to right. meet up with Hate Breed. Right, right. And yeah. uh, we've got one more show in Grand Rapids tomorrow, then a day off, and then the, the Hate Breed tour starts in Cleveland. How long will you be out with that? I think that goes for about a month. And then we do another week worth of shows on the way home on our own with the, with this same package right, right now. Right. Do you, do you see that tours are growing longer, shorter? I mean, is uh, uh, the industry's changing, obviously. Mm. In my experience with this band, I mean, we had some longer tours and we had some shorter tours. This is one of the longer ones we've done right. in the states, but I, mean, I haven't been out on tour for over a year and a half. Really? Yeah. Really? You know, because. You know, we were working on the record, and then we sure. went on hiatus for a while while Des was doing Cold Chamber. And right. So I've, uh, I haven't been out a lot lately, but, you know, we're doing this in seven and a half weeks, and then we're going to Europe, and it's only for three and a half. Right. You know, and then hopefully whatever we're doing till the end of the year will take up quite a bit of time. Gotcha. Now, does, does the energy build or fall as tour goes on? How do you find that, that works? I mean, do you... Uh, it depends. Mm-hmm. Does excitement build or fall as you go? I guess toward the end of a long tour, uh-huh. you uh, d- depending on what you have waiting for you at home. I found uh, <laughs> when I'm single, okay. I don't really care about going home as much. But when go. I've had a girlfriend, you know, it's you got to go home and something to look forward to. Yeah, it's something more to look forward to when you get home. Yeah, that's but, what you better so say. It, it kind of depends on. Well, I don't have a girlfriend right now, so. Oh, there you go. Um, but yeah, toward the end it can be a little, you know, well, get cool. a little bit much living on a bus with eleven dudes. <laughs> cool. What's what's the worst part of touring? You think? Finding a clean place to take a shit. Okay, that's great. <laughs> Real talk here on the podcast. What's the best part of, of the tour, of the road? On this particular tour, it's just the people that I I That's have cool. around me. Yeah. I mean, it's it's been almost too much fun. We've oh, been cool. having too much fun, and, and we're all feeling it today. <laughs> oh, okay. Excellent. Any good stories so far, then? I mean, nothing out of the ordinary. I know we've been having a lot of fun with the opening bands. You know, Holy Grail, you know, always seems to stop right. by our dressing room late on, on the, uh, after the show, and, you know, we just sit there and drink beers with them, you know. Okay. But nothing right. too crazy. We're all... I mean, most of us are in our, we're not in our 20s. Sure. You know, yeah. so we, we take it easy. No hard drugs, just, just you know, some beers here and there, and sometimes cool. we might drink a little bit too many of them. Yeah, I've never done that myself, so <laughs> I can't identify at all. All right, let's talk the new album. Give me uh, the details. Basically, let's start with name and the release date, because it's coming up soon, right? Trust No One comes out May 13th, uh, Friday the 13th, which is, what day is it today? Today is... While I'm doing this interview, is Tuesday, so it comes out in three days. Yeah, yeah. So it's going to be Friday the 13th release day, yep. man. Good stuff. Now, um, what can we expect from that? You can expect a lot of mic riffs on it. Okay. And uh, compared to previous Devil Driver records. Okay. But uh, you can also expect some Austin and Neil riffs as well too. Okay. A drummer wrote, you know, some things here and there. One song is uh, "Feeling Ungodly" is mostly his. Okay. The uh, first single we put out, Daybreak, was mostly written by Neil. Mm-hmm. And the second uh, one we released, My Night Sky, was mostly written by me. So so what's it like writing? I mean, you know, you take the hiatus and then you're coming back. And, and is, is, it a, is it a grind or is it a pleasure? It's good to get it out? It's or? a pleasure this time because I built a new studio in my house. Okay, And, cool. uh, you know, I have this soundproofed cave that <laughs> I can, I could, you know... My, no one can hear me record. I can be almost as loud as I want in there yeah. all night long, okay. and so there's no restraints on having to be quiet. It's it's a different atmosphere than every other Devil Driver I've ever worked on okay. because and it's 
it's bigger, it's sure. nicer. I made it, like it has a vibe. It's yeah. not just a computer and a desk in a bedroom somewhere, which is what we used to do in the past. You know, so I'm. I started writing out on my own. You know, when the other guys quit, and um, you know, eventually, you know, Des basically handed me Neil and Austin at the same time. Right. Like. Um, here's our new drummer, here's our new guitar player, get to work. <laughs> and, I mean, there was a little bit more to it than that. Sure. But, that's but you had to make magic. Yeah. yeah, and I'd never met either of the guys before. But That's got to be awkward, man. I mean, do you, do you have do you go through adjustment? Kind I of? was totally standoffish at first. Nice. But after one day, it all went away. Cool, cool. Yeah. Okay, now, um, I assume your influences change from album to album. I mean, can you talk about that a little bit? I mean, how much do they change? I've noticed since I first started writing this band that Jerry Control has definitely become um, a primary influence for me as far as, it, anyway, from where I can pinpoint one guitar player. Right. Um, and yeah, I always say Bjorn from In Flames and Jerry oh, Control yeah. are two of my favorite guitar players because the way they they write, and especially their solos, are... Yeah. They're phrased very well. Right. They're not just noodling a million miles per hour because they can, and mm -hmm. they're very tasty. Right. And that's that's what I like about those two guys. And I, I don't know how well I do it, but I try. Oh yeah, excellent. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, when you, when you're touring, there's kind of a fine line between the old fan favorites and then the new artist direction. How do you how do you kind of adjudicate that? You know, we've been doing this for, or at least I, Des has been doing this for, you know, and. Double Driver for 14 years now, and I've been in the band for 12. Mm -hmm. You know, it's does ask basically ask me before to do this tour just to go make a set list. And I see. Um, when you have seven records mm -hmm. and, and you only have an hour to play, right? Or in 50 minutes when we get to Hate Breed, it's it's pretty easy to pick the fan favorites. Yeah. We know which ones go over well. Yeah. And, like Austin's sitting right here, so he reminded me. He was like, I "Wasn't I think it was you in rehearsal? Like, was it you or Neil that's kind of unsure about playing before the Hangman's Noose?" Um, yeah, it was. Yeah, I think it was me. Yeah, I think it, that was me. What? And I was just like, "Dude, trust me. This song goes over better than almost any other song in our set." Yeah, and it really does. It's one of those weird. I felt like you know it made sense later because it's like sure that's from the first album and bands progress. So to me, comparing the first to like what I hear currently, even the album before, it's like night and day as far as how much better the band got. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But at that time, that's what kind of was the uh, the standard in, in the industry. So people still want to hear that stuff too. I, I totally get it. But oh, yeah. until I saw it, I wasn't completely sold, you know, and then when I see it, I'm like, alright, this is cool. Now I like to play this a lot. <laughs> now you get it. Yeah, it's so, uh, how long have you been in the industry in general, not just this band, but like a little personal history? Uh, let's see. Um, I kind of, I, I, after high school, I wanted to not go to college and just go directly, you know, mm -hmm. and dive into the whole L.A. metal scene. Right. Because I, I didn't live too far away, but... Um, my family eventually convinced me to go to college, and a uh, good thing they did because that's uh, where I met Devil Driver in Santa Barbara. Uh, yeah. So I went there. I was in like a progressive black metal band that would play like 10 or 15 minute songs. Wow. And, you know, we didn't have much of a following. And looking back, like some, some of the shit we played was just downright awful, but it was not easy to play. It was hard. Right. And the guy that wrote a lot of the songs is. This guy named DJ was a phenomenal guitar player, and playing with him really kicked me in the ass. Mm. And then he was a music major, and then finally he, I decided I'd do like, okay, I'll I'll become a music major as well. And when right. I did that, and uh, just you know, was in a couple local bands around Santa Barbara, mm -hmm. you know, mainly with the older guys and in, in Devil Driver too, right. and that's how we all met. And then uh, you know, literally overnight one day I. You know, they needed someone to go to Europe with them because the other guitar didn't play or didn't want to go. So I yeah. dropped everything and. Um, oh, let me close that door. Oh, cool. Cool. The loud heavy metalers are interrupting the interview. Those people are crazy. <laughs> All right. The loud tour manager and loud lighting guy. <laughs> They're the worst. Uh, so. What's the biggest change in the industry since you started? I've slowly, over time, have seen how record sales have just completely, utterly depleted. 
every band we ask that question to. So and far. for me personally, it's, it's I see a lot of the same people at our shows, uh-huh. and now they're bringing their kids. Yeah, and that. You know, I guess it makes me feel old, but I don't give a fuck about getting old. I mean, I'm 35, and it's yeah. like I don't wish I was 25. I like being 35, but uh, I don't plan on having kids ever in my life, and I'm kind of a big kid. But that's what's one big change. It's just kind of like yeah. you know, and it, I think it's cool that people bring their kids. Uh-huh. But we were doing a show the other day, and this is just bad parenting in my opinion but this this guy brought his two kids that could couldn't even see over the barricade yeah. to the front row oh and i'm sorry but that is just not a good idea to bring your kids and there was another guy with his kid now this kid was he was probably closer to like 10 or 11 right you know the the other kids in front of me were like probably 5 to 6 yeah one girl got kicked in the face with oh. a crowd surfer and the whole area around me knew these kids were there and everyone was just standing still because right. no one wanted to hurt the sure. kids. So That's it's cool. like, take your kids, put them on your shoulders, and go to the back of the venue somewhere safe. Yeah. Don't bring them up front. Yeah. That's what the probably the first time I've seen that, yeah. and I, I was I was just totally bummed me out. Yeah. That's uh, that's kind of crazy. Um, now our podcast is called the Great Metal Debate, and it's kind of an '80s metal versus new metal debate. There's a lot of arguing about genres. You know, where do you where do you guys fall in that range, and and do you even give a shit about stuff like that? I don't give a shit. I've had people call us metalcore, right? Mostly groove metal, which I think is awesome. Mm-hmm. I, I actually, a lot of people don't like to be labeled, but I'm, I have no problem being called groove metal. I think it's pretty cool. Okay. And Excellent. but I've seen like when I first read an interview saying that we had metalcore influence, I didn't even know what metalcore was. Right. You know. So yes, metal has turned into all these different little subgenres, and I mean, like Gojira and Whitechapel are two of my favorite metal bands, which are definitely in two different subgenres. But I don't even know what to call them, right? You know, right. so I, no, I don't. The answer is no, I don't really pay attention to it. And people ask me what that don't uh, um, have never heard of the band before. Like, what kind of metal are you guys? And right. I just say straightforward metal. Excellent. You know, I don't mean say groove metal because they probably won't even know what that is, or they're just going to interpret it in their brain as something different. You know? Right. Right. So I just say, just go listen to it, make up your own mind. You can call us whatever you want. All right. Uh, so where can fans get music and merchandise for Double Driver? Uh, you can get it straight from our website. Okay. You can get it on iTunes. Get it on Amazon. You can get our stuff at Best Buy. Uh, I mean. Almost anywhere. It's pretty exciting. You know, I'm sure you can steal it, too, if you want, but we'd prefer if you didn't. Okay, yeah. Good tip. Good tip. <laughs> All right. Well, Mike and Austin from Devil Driver, thank you both. Uh, it was a pleasure, and uh, looking forward to the show. Thanks, man. All right. All right.